Hello and welcome to the 10th annual Make Room for Debate event. My name is Greer Burke and I currently attend Lane Tech High School and I'm a freshman. Thank you for being here to support student debaters like me and to honor our 2021 champion of debate, Allstate, for a decade of support. A decade is a super long time and took up a majority of the chunk of my life. I was just four years old when Allstate started supporting Chicago debates. But last year, I joined the Skinner West debate team for the first time as an eighth grader, which is relatively late. Many students join debate to become better speakers, to learn new things, or because their parents make them. Now, some of that is also true for me, but my story is a little bit different. I definitely sought out debate because I knew I would learn more things about what was happening in the world, and I believed it would strengthen my skills. So... COVID, as you know, halted all of our lives. And for the first time ever, schools were forced to close and provide virtual learning. And just about all extracurricular activities had ended. So when I was looking for something fun to do after school and realized that the debate pro program was still running and some of my friends were participating, I decided to join the team. Even though debate was a huge part of my school culture and a pretty cool thing to be a part of, I was surprised that it was still running. But I soon realized that this wasn't the case at every school and how blessed we were at Skinner West to still have the opportunity to participate in debate during a pandemic. Maybe some other schools didn't have that and that's why we need to fight for equity for all. And the Chicago debates team didn't miss a beat going from in-person to virtual debate. So kudos to you guys. I had a great first year in debate. The debate topic focused on criminal justice and money bail and was so relevant to what was going on across the country. The cries, the protests, and demands for justice, equity, and peace. I couldn't have been prouder to be learning about facts, evidence, policies, and laws on this topic and arguing for ways to reform and improve our criminal justice system. And I was learning about real life matters, but most importantly, how to argue for changing real life systems. While debate teaches us to use our voice, it also forces us to listen and think, to seek out evidence and facts, to support our arguments, to speak and write passionately and persuasively, and it expands our knowledge and interest in a variety of topics, specifically related to the public policy. I learned firsthand how debate teaches you to persist, and I learned to keep going, not give up, and to exude confidence and be confident, even though you might be unsure of yourself. But you got to keep going. But debate is also an activity that connects and builds community. Being on a debate team, a very large debate team to be exact, we learn about teamwork and collaboration. We learn to have empathy and to respect and welcome the thoughts and views of others. We learn to use our voices to advocate for our needs and needs for others and to push for change in our community. Now, I haven't lived that long of a life yet, but I'm confident that the skills that I learned in debate I will apply to future things in high school, college, in my career. So I look forward to debating in high school and to keep learning and growing and sharpening my skills so that I can help people and help to change the world someday. Thanks to donors like Allstate and supporters like you. Chicago Debates has been able to make sure that debate remains available for Chicago public school students, even during a global pandemic. Again, welcome to the Make Room for Debate 10. Thank you for attending and for supporting debate programming for students like me. Enjoy your experience. Good afternoon, Chicago Debates community. And thank you, Greer, for that energizing and exciting welcome. I'm Dr. Toynette Gunn, Executive Director for Chicago Debates. I am so delighted to have you join us today for our 10th anniversary Make Room for Debate event. We were so excited to host this event in person this year, but COVID disrupted that again. Within two weeks, we had to quickly switch the event from in-person to virtual. But if we've learned nothing else from COVID, we've learned to quickly pivot, to innovate, 
and to use technology to engineer solutions. So here we are again with an amazing virtual event planned for you today. But before we jump into our program, I would like to thank our event sponsors, our premier platinum sponsor, Allstate Insurance, our gold sponsors, Fager Drinker, I Manage, and Wilkie Farr and Gallagher, our silver sponsors, and thank you to all of our bronze sponsors as well. All of our sponsors are highlighted in our digital program book, so be sure to check them out there. While COVID has posed a number of challenges for all of us, we've also experienced a number of successes this past year. Despite many Chicago Public School extracurricular activities being canceled or operating at 50% or less capacity, we were able to keep over 1,100 students engaged in debate, which is about 65% of our pre-COVID participation rates. We attribute some of this success to the rollout of our piloted public forum debate season, where we were able to serve 121 students, 83 of whom were brand new debaters. We remained on mission to delivering debate to the communities where the need is the greatest. I don't know if you missed it, but we were featured on the Wintrust Building Mural, which was unveiled during our virtual unveiling event. And we were awarded a grant valued at $50,000 from Morton Group LLC to focus on racial equity, which was featured on NBC5 Chicago's Making a Difference segment. And our work garnered the media attention of top Chicago networks such as Fox 32, CBS2, and the Sun-Times, just to name a few. Oh, what a year it was. And we've got more up our sleeves for the year ahead. So stay tuned to those updates throughout the year. Embrace yourself for an inspirational program today. Thank you again to each of you for joining us today. Now grab your lunch and enjoy your experience. Scientific studies are largely inconclusive. The benefit of big data policing is political. Even though these stories teach us about morals and lessons that need to be learned, we don't see much representation. We find that there were no significant differences in the proportion of arrest by racial, racial ethnic group between control and treatment conditions. Debate has been the most impactful thing to ever happen to me. I think debate is kind of a lifestyle. I think that it opens up a new mindset. The debate like really has helped me find my voice and it's something that I really do enjoy doing. For me, debate means more than just arguing about a topic. I think that debate goes more into your identity about how expressive you are, how creative you are, how open you are. Debate has made my life astronomically easier because I now have the education to back me up in a higher academic setting. Recent data shows that only 20% of Chicago public high school graduates are likely to complete a bachelor's degree within six years of high school graduation, with those rates being lowest for Black and Latino students. Research has found that students who debate increase their GPA, have higher standardized test scores, they're three times more likely to graduate from high school, and 80% more likely to graduate from college. I noticed that I feel more confident in myself with reading and speaking out loud. They've told me that I've got to speak loud, don't speak low. Debate really is a transformational activity because it cultivates numerous skills from academic to social emotional to career and leadership and ultimately life skills like increasing content knowledge, reading, research, cooperative learning, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, logic, persuasion, listening. Debate promotes and cognitive skills like motivation, resilience, and persistence. And it fosters student, civic, and social engagement. When I think of debate, I think of 
the fact that policy debate is a is a paired sport. You have a partner that you have to work with and and be strategic with. So I think you know the skills of strategy, the skills related to collaboration, those skills related to research, argumentation, making sure that you can move people with what you're saying, have a connection with someone that you never would have thought you would have a connection with. Debate is civil discourse and teaches students to use their voices along with facts and evidence to have difficult conversations and to disagree with civility. Debate pushes students to learn about public policy issues that affect them and their communities. These lessons seem to be more critical today than ever before, especially as we prepare these young people to assume future positions. Of I think that it just allows you to be quick on your feet and to hold your head high. Like, I feel like that was one of the best things I've learned because regardless of what you do know, it's not about what you know, it's about how you present yourself. It's definitely helped my ability to read and comprehend a lot of texts and like writing styles that you may not have encountered otherwise in high school. I'm more outspoken now and I feel more confident about talking issues that I might have not known about. And now on my free time, I research issues that are important to me that I see on the news. So if someone asks me or if it's a topic in class, I can be able to give them a, a good answer and I have sources to back me up. I love it. I'm learning. I'm meeting amazing, kind people. Never once do you have to worry about whether if you have a question, you're going to be judged. Chicago Debates um, is a program that really offers students the supports, the resources um, and the guidance to succeed in a complex world like policy debate, because I knew that I could hopefully um, help students fall in love with language, fall in love in, you know, with research um, and speaking like I did as a student myself. CPS leadership has continued to advocate and support for debate in Chicago public schools because it aligns to our core values. Chicago Public Schools has committed to six core values. As a district, we work to ensure that we are student-centered, focused on the whole child, advancing academic excellence, seeking strong community partnerships, living a commitment to equity, and continuously learning. Our commitment to debate aligns to our core values. Debate allows students to experience meaningful relationships. It challenges them to develop skills and attributes that will make them well-rounded citizens. And truly, it advances academic excellence by pushing their critical thinking. By funding debate across our city, we are advancing equity by closing the opportunity gap. Debate truly aligns to our core values as a district. Thank you for the donors and to the people who support Chicago Debates. I would definitely say thank y'all. Thank you for all of the donors and supporters who are supporting Chicago Debates. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for your con contribution to this great activity. I'd like to say that you can continue support because you are directly enhancing the opportunities of a lot of kids. I'm looking forward to continuing to like win debates, learn more, meet new people. I feel like it's just a one of a kind experience. It is so imperative that people have these experiences when they're younger because it opens them up to being in different environments when they're older. People who really debate, we really enjoy it and we really appreciate people who actually care about the youth and like the upcoming generation. My name is Ava McKenzie. I'm debating for Lim Bloom Math and Science Academy. I've been debating for one year so far, and I will be defending in-person learning. And hello, my name is Amati Washington. I debate for Kenwood Academy High School. I've been debating for two years, and I will be defending virtual learning. In-person learning should be preferred over virtual learning. The positive impacts of in-person learning include two major issues, social and emotional health and accessibility. First, 
School is one of the primary places where students learn social and emotional skills. According to Roger Weisberg, professor of psychology and education at the University of Illinois in Chicago. Experts agree that greater social and emotional competence can increase the likelihood of high school graduation, readiness for post-secondary education, career success, positive family and work relationships, better mental health, reduced criminal behavior, and engaged citizenship. If students don't have access to these interactions, they can be at a great disadvantage in the development of their personal and professional lives. Next, the CDC published a health study in March that found that virtual learning may result in more risk to wellness and mental health in both students and parents. The study reports that almost 25% of worsened or mental or emotional health and students received some sort of virtual learning. Next, Students in poor communities are less likely to have access to the internet and computers. The transition to virtual learning will continue to deepen the disparities within the educational system faced by students of color and low-income families. According to the NPR and First Kids Chicago, about 20% of children in Chicago live without homes, live in homes without the internet. With no access to the internet, students are not equipped to succeed in a technological learning environment. Low-income students who are disproportionately from minority communities are negatively impacted by virtual learning. The education barrier furthers the entrenchment of the racial gap that exists in society today. Next, students that have learning disabilities are not receiving the assistance that they need and were receiving to prior to wide-scale virtual learning. CNN reports that there are roughly 7 million students with special needs in the United States who qualify for specifically tailored accommodations at school, known as the IEP. These students are finding the day-to-day -day education they are receiving falling short. In conclusion, you should vote for in-person learning for two reasons. One, because our students and social and emotional well-being great, is greatly undervalued in society. And two, our education should be accessible to all. Thank you. I'm open for cross -ex. Why is it necessary to return to school in person right now instead of just waiting until COVID cases drop? Students have been greatly affected by COVID, yes, but also they have been greatly affected by the lack of studying and the lack of schooling. So students right now, their main focus should be to get back to school and to learn as much as possible. Virtual learning is preferable to in-person learning in Chicago right now. Safety should be our number one priority when it comes to school. When students are sick, they are unable to effectively learn or socialize. And that leads me to my first contention, which is safety. Sub point A is COVID. COVID cases are skyrocketing in Chicago right now due to the highly contagious Delta variant. Because the vaccine isn't approved for kids under 12, no elementary school and no middle school students are vaccinated. And according to US News, only 25% of eligible kids are vaccinated. As has been widely reported, kids, especially younger ones, often take off their masks throughout the day or wear them incorrectly. But even if a student perfectly follows protocol, they can still easily catch the airborne Delta variant at lunch and pass it along to high risk family members. Sub point B is the teachers. Some teachers will also catch COVID and they teach many different classes of students. Teachers are often older and at much higher risk of hospitalization and death. Many will quit rather than risk their health. The Chicago Teacher Union president agreed on August 30th and said CPS is a mess and the city's reopening plan is not ready. That leaves schools understaffed and it means students don't receive the attention and feedback they need to learn and grow. And that leads me to my next contention, which is distance. Many students have long commutes to get to and from school. On average, in Chicago students spend three hours of time just in transit. This is physically draining and stressful for students as they may not get home until 8 p.m. at night. At least students with little to no time to do homework, eat dinner, spend time with family, and unwind and relax. This is especially true because according to ABC News on August 30th, a recent mass resignation of school bus drivers have led to, has led to the cancellation of many bus routes. They use students with no transportation at all to school. In conclusion, if you care about the safety of children, you must vote for virtual learning. As a society, we must prioritize the health of students and teachers above all else. First question, is there any way to guarantee that students wouldn't go online just to search for answers? Well, there's no way to guarantee that students won't go online just for answers, but 
uh, schools should be teaching kids the process to find the answers and not just to find the solutions. And in certain classes, like writing or reading classes, you can't get the answer just by looking up things online. Um, and also, it's far less important than the lives of these students. Okay. And how does your constructive solve for children with learning disabilities who need to be in classrooms? Virtual learning doesn't completely help or solve for these issues. It does mean that they aren't exposed to COVID and getting not rushing kids into school right now makes the quarantine period shorter. So that would lead to actually less time for these kids to be stuck at home and not be able to get the proper learning they need. Okay, and how does your constructive solve for the difference in the spread of resources like in the black and brown communities compared to those in white ones? Well, just in the last year, we've seen a massive increase in ramping up of um, technology to these lower income communities. And it's better that they would end up with less learning than they would end up catching COVID and not being able to do the things they love, like sports, talking with friends, being around friends. And the last thing of COVID is far longer. Also, the quarantine period would be longer if we rush kids back into school. Students are learning at home in the same way as how they used to learn at school. During the pandemic, many houses' incomes disappeared and many families could not afford to obtain computers for their children or to learn at home. My opponent addresses none of this. Students are genuinely affected by the lack of schooling and as I said earlier, it will greatly impact black and brown communities and widen the gap. About 20% of children in Chicago live in homes without the internet and about 40% of students in North Lawndale neighborhood are connected. Only 40%, that's a small amount. My opponent also said that it's harder to get into school and it stresses out students, but for most children, it's still the same as it was as from one year ago. Nothing has changed and the impact, my impact, is still greater. He also says something about increasing socialization. This isn't about increasing socialization, that's only a small part. We're trying to get students to get back into the classrooms to be able to learn more and to be able to learn for their futures. Thank you. At the end of the debate, ask yourself if increasing socialization for kids is worth people dying because that's what it will cost. Sick students can't learn, sick teachers can't teach, and scared teachers quit. Rushing kids into school makes quarantine longer, which would make the mental health and education impacts worse. And the longer a virus is a threat, the more it evolves and the more lives it takes. A mother of a student wrote, I would prefer you go back to classes by Zoom. And she also wrote, I prefer you lose a little knowledge which you can recover and not lose a child or a family member. Uh, cross applying for my first speech, not a single elementary school student under 12 is vaccinated. Do you want to risk their lives for this? Not to mention minority deaths is far more prevalent if they are in overpopulated schools. And once again, only 25% of kids have been vaccinated. Jesse Sharkey wrote, CPS is a mess and the city reopening plan is not ready for prime time, but it's a familiar position because educators are called upon to turn water into wine. Just in the last year, year we have seen a vast expansion of tech access and still less um, a lessening of the racial gap. Would you rather children with disabilities not be able to go to school for a year or not be able to go to school for far longer because of the lengthened quarantine period? Also, um, cross applying from my distance argument in my first speech, every second a child is in transit, they can catch or spread COVID to others. In conclusion, don't risk lives for something we will all get over sooner. The more we stay at home, the quicker this will all be over. Thank you. Hello, my name is David Nadig, and I'm proud to serve in a dual capacity today, both as chair of the Chicago Debates Board and as senior vice president and deputy general counsel of Allstate Insurance Company, a premier platinum sponsor of this virtual experience. Thank you for joining us. Today, 
We are here to recognize and honor Allstate for a decade of supporting Chicago youth and Chicago debates. This connection began a little more than 10 years ago when Michelle Mays, our former general counsel, and our CEO, Tom Wilson, realized that the academic, civic, career, and leadership skills that are fostered through debate would help transform the lives of Chicago public school students. As business leaders, they understood just how important those skills are in cultivating future leaders, especially here in our hometown of Chicago, Illinois. That being the case, they took action. Michelle envisioned Allstate as something like the Pied Piper, using our influence in the community to help increase awareness about Chicago debates, but more importantly, to lead and model the way and inspire other companies to join supporting this worthy cause. This vision and commitment of support led Chicago Debates to honor Allstate CEO Tom Wilson as its first champion of debate at the inaugural Make Room for Debate luncheon in 2011. Since that time, Allstate's support and partnership with Chicago Debates has continued and expanded, including an annual Allstate tournament hosted on the Allstate campus in Northbrook, sponsorship of the city championships and support for local school debate teams. And most importantly, the engagement of hundreds of volunteers who have devoted thousands of hours to help judge and organize tournaments. These volunteers truly reflect what it means to be in good hands with Allstate by demonstrating the passion Allstaters have for improving our communities and our commitment to youth empowerment. At Allstate, we believe good starts young. In the last 10 years, Chicago Debates has grown tremendously, tripling in size. There's no doubt in our minds that our growth and success would not have been possible without the unwavering support of Allstate. So as the board started preparations for our 10th anniversary of this Make Room for Debate event and reflected back on the past decade, my colleagues, not me personally, but my colleagues, felt we needed to recognize Allstate's vision, leadership, and commitment to our partnership. Allstate has been and remains a true champion of debate. And today we honor and thank Allstate for a decade of support. And now I have the pleasure of introducing my boss, Rhonda Ferguson, whom I would like to thank personally for agreeing to accept the Champion of Debate Award on behalf of Allstate. Rhonda Ferguson is Executive Vice President, Chief Legal Officer, General Counsel, and Secretary of the Allstate Corporation and Allstate Insurance Company. She leads Allstate's 1,900-person legal team to guide the company's business strategy, ensure compliance, and foster a healthy legal, legislative, and regulatory environment. Rhonda joined Allstate in 2020 from Union Pacific Railroad, where she served as Executive Vice President. Chief Legal Officer and Corporate Secretary and was responsible for all legal, regulatory, and corporate governance initiatives. But before joining Union Pacific in 2016, Rhonda was Vice President, Corporate Secretary, and Chief Ethics Officer of First Energy Corp, where she led teams responsible for corporate, real estate, and compliance initiatives. Rhonda was previously Assistant General Counsel and Assistant Secretary with Ferro Corp, she was partner with AmLaw's 100 Baker Hostetler Law Firm and began her career with Thompson Hine. Ferguson has an undergraduate degree in engineering from Northwestern University and a JD from Case Western University. And now it's my pleasure to welcome Rhonda Ferguson here to accept our Champion of Debate Award. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today. And thanks also for allowing Allstate to be a longtime partner of Chicago Debates. It's our privilege to support this organization and what it stands for. If you ask most people what the point of debate is, they'd probably tell you it's about winning an argument. 
And certainly that's part of the equation. After all, debate is competition. But what is debate quintessentially about is active listening. I'll say that again, active listening, particularly in a time when all of us should be really committed to presenting and listening to arguments and different viewpoints in a civil and thoughtful manner. We live in a world where many of us hear leaders, family members and friends digging into intractable views and speaking points. Debate is about actively listening, internalizing what you've heard and then responding in kind. You might even change your viewpoint if you don't concede that on the spot. We live in a world where a number of us seek out confirmation of our own beliefs rather than seeking out credible alternative viewpoints. Debate demands that you do your homework and not only learn the nuances of a position, but also, just as importantly, how others look and view the world. That allows you to listen to your opponent and hear their perspective and where they're coming from. We live in a world where domination rather than dialogue often wins the day. Debate actually forces you to take a breath, step back and listen instead of stepping on your opponent's words before they can fully express their thoughts. And that's just a common courtesy, right? There are these skills that stretch far beyond the classroom and auditoriums where Chicago debate students hone their craft. Empirical research shows that social and emotional learning skills like resilience, empathy, and teamwork are a better predictor of lifelong success than academic ability alone. Increasing these skills results in both immediate and long-term improvements in school and work as well as life. And that's regardless of one's background, socioeconomic status, interests and aptitudes. Learning, critical thinking, and dialogue are fundamental to solving many of life's most complex problems. And Chicago debates also reflects all states' commitment to inclusive diversity and equity, as well as youth empowerment. Students develop the skills that will equip them for success in the future. All state is committed to making that future as bright as possible. And we'd love more Chicagoans and locally based companies to join us in this mission. If you're a current supporter, thank you very much. And please don't stop. You will continue to make a difference. If you're considering support, I wholeheartedly encourage you to make the commitment today. I promise you, this is an investment worth the best of returns. Thank you all for your time today. And most importantly, thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Rasha Fowler and I'm a sixth grade student and a member of the debate team at CSCS Wrightwood Elementary School. Thank you again for joining us today to show your support for student debaters. It's been a great program, and I hope you've been impressed and inspired by what you heard and seen. Most importantly, I hope that the impact of debate and arts and activity that should be available to all students in Chicago public schools was made clear for you. But if for some reason you missed it during that quick bathroom break, <laughs> or while you were multitasking and sending that quick email, let me catch you back up. I didn't know about the debate team. If one of my teachers thought I would be good at it and suggested that I try it. My mom agreed and said that I could learn a lot in debate. So I trusted them and decided to give it a try. I debated for the first time in the new public forum program. And just like my mom and teacher predicted, I learned a lot and I was pretty good at it. Specifically, I learned all about how to debate. If 
I had to say, most important thing I learned about how to debate, it would be to always use some facts, but to also mix in some of my opinion. I learned that the combination of those two things makes for a strong argument and one that I could probably win. I also learned when not to debate and to be respectful and listen to what the other person is saying. That lesson is also a good one to follow with my mom. I'm looking forward to debating again this year, learning more, building those skills that debate teaches, even as a sixth grader. There are things that I hear and see that are wrong, but that I'd like to change. I plan to use what I learned in debate to help speak up for myself, for others, and to push for changing things that are wrong and unfair. The things I learned in debate and will continue to learn should be the things that students learn too. I know that every student may not want to debate, but every student should have the opportunity to debate if they want to. Chicago Debates has a goal to make that happen. They have a dream for every Chicago public school to have a debate team so that every Chicago public school student can experience the benefits of debate if they want to, just like I did and just like I'm doing. Students should have that choice. I like to see that dream come true, wouldn't you? Thank you. Thank you, Rashad. Could you be any more impressed by that young man and our other debaters featured in our program today? Through these few students, I hope you saw just how impactful debate can be and why it should be an activity that all Chicago public school students have access to. As Rashad said, every student may not want to debate, but let that be the choice that they have because they have access to do so and not because it's unavailable to them. Rashad also shared our dream of having a debate team at every Chicago public school and left you with a simple question to ponder, don't you? While some things are debatable, it's not debatable that we have to invest in our youth, their education, and the cultivation of their skills to ensure they are prepared for college, careers, future roles of leadership, and life. If we don't invest in them today, what will that mean for our tomorrow? Our work here at Chicago Debates is about those investments, but we cannot do this work alone. We need your help and your investment our goal today is to raise $25,000, which we know is achievable through your generosity. Will you support student success and invest in the cultivation of our future leaders? Donations today will help us to host up to 50 tournaments for students to strengthen their skills through competition. This year, we are aiming to get our numbers back to where they were pre-COVID, and serve over 1,700 students. If every person today makes a donation, we can reach our $25,000 goal. A $5,000 donation can sponsor one debate tournament for 75 to 100 students. A $2,500 donation can help to sponsor a new debate team at a South or West Side Title I school. A $1,500 donation can help provide training and support for a debate team for the year. A $1,000 donation can provide Wi-Fi hotspots or vouchers and other technology needed for students to participate in hybrid tournaments. A $500 donation can provide tuition for one Title I student's two-week participation in summer debate camp. Twenty $250 donations can sponsor one debate tournament 
for 75 to 100 students. 25 $100 donations today can help us to raise $2,500 and sponsor a new debate team at a South or West Side Title I school. 30 $50 donations can help provide training and support for a debate team for the year. There are three ways you can give today that we've been displaying on your screens. You can text SHY Debates to 243-725, or you can go online to make your donation or to make a pledge for a future donation. There is a giving level for everyone. So please take a moment and give what you can. As we close, we hope today's experience proved why you should support debate as an investment in Chicago youth. We want to again thank all of our event sponsors, our program participants, and each of you for spending an hour with us today. Thank you to our board and staff who worked so hard behind the scenes to make this possible. And a very special thank you to our production team at Digife who helped bring our vision for today's event to life. We hope you enjoyed this experience today and we look forward to seeing you in person on June 16, 2022 for our 11th annual Make Room for Debate Luncheon and our 25th anniversary celebration. Thank you.